Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 2D Fundamentals. My name is Kasanis. In the last episode, we built ourselves our zombie skeleton, our zombie FK skeleton. In today's episode, guys, I'd like to take a look at the difference between FK and IK and build ourselves some IK constraints. All right, let's get started. Okay, guys, so in the between the last episode and this episode, I actually uh, forgot to save my file. <laughs> so I've rebuilt it. Hopefully, I built it the same way that we did. If not, it's going to be close enough that I'm not going to worry too, too much about it. I think I made a change the naming. I called this like zombie stuff instead. Anyway, guys, otherwise, I think it's pretty much identical. Let's go in and take a look at the difference between the between IK and FK animation. Right now, our character is all FK. If I actually grab on, let me go to animation for a second. If I grab onto this joint, let's say, and I rotate that joint around, you can see that's what's called FK. Basically, what that means is if I move the parent, all of the children follow along. All right, every, every child in the chain follows along, and that's great. FK is used for a lot of things when it comes to like free movement. It offers free arcs, and that's one of the 12 principles. You guys are watching this series, you know that's one of the 12 principles, arcs. And by, by creating FK, for example, if I go back to animate for a second, if I want my character to walk, I can put a frame here, and I can put a, a frame here, a keyframe here, and I will get everything in between, right? He'll walk along, which is awesome. I won't get that in IK. IK is inverse kinematics. And in inverse kinematics, what happens is the child is kind of the child in the chain is in charge of everything above it. So if I move the child around, everything above it will automatically move. Now you might say, well that that doesn't sound awesome. What's it for? Well, IK is designed so that you can have things stay in place. That's what it's basically used for. So let me let me show you an example here. Let's say that in the same way my character is walking, my character's walking and I've got that arm swinging, but maybe in his other hand he's holding a staff. Now, if my character is holding a staff and he's walking along, let me go back to animate for a second here. Let's say he's walking along. I've got the root control. And I am translating my root along. Everything is moving along with it, right? Everything is moving along with that root control. And that, that doesn't work. I want to put the staff down, and I don't want to counter animate it. Every time I want to move the, the body, I don't want to have to counter animate where the staff is. I want that staff to stay where I placed it. Same with the feet. Let's say that I was going to have this character jump up and down. As my character squats or anticipates into his jump and he squats down, the feet are moving, and they've moved through my ground plane. And that's not cool. I don't want to have to counter animate and put my feet back where they were and try and move everything around. I don't want that at all. Instead, what I want to do is have my feet or my walking staff or whatever it is stay where I've placed it. Okay, so let's go on over to our setup once again. And let's take a look at how we're going to create an IK, an IK constraint. So I'll start off by creating the IK constraint on one side. I'm going to create it over here on the, on the right-hand leg. I'm going to select my thigh bone, and I'm going to control select my my uh, knee bone here. And with IK constraints in spine, you can only have a maximum of two joint chain. You can have one or two joints, but no more. All right. In other programs, you can have more than that many joints, but in spine, you can only have two joints. So I'm going to grab my my hip as well as my as well as my uh, shin or my thigh, whatever I've called it now. I keep forgetting what I've called it. And I'm going to go over to find constraints. I'm going to scroll down. And I'm going to find the constraints. When I click it, bang, it's going to ask me, what do you want to create? What new constraint do you want to create? And I'm going to say, create a brand new IK constraint. And what I do, it says, well, where? Where do you want to choose it? And I'm going to choose right about the corner of this ankle right there. And when I, when I select it, it's going to say, okay, what do you want to call it? And I'm going to call this guy IK underscore ankle underscore R. So I know it's my right-hand side. And you're going to notice a couple of things right away. The bones are no longer solid. This bone here should be pink. Let me change that over. I didn't do that, apparently. Let's make that into our kind of purpley pink. There we go. Great. Return. All right. So we'll notice right away that our, our pants bone, our pants bone right here, is kind of a purplish color, solid purple. However, anything with an IK is going to be hollow like this. So these have IK constraints. We can see it right away. We've also created this little tiny orange thing down here on the ankle. That orange thing is our animatable point. That's our IK point. If we go and find our, our hip and our knee, for example, if we look across right now, there's actually a little symbol that says it has an IK constraint. If we hover over that IK constraint, it'll eventually tell us what it is. This one's our IK ankle R. Awesome. At the very top, right here is our IK ankle underscore R. 
and the IK ankle underscore R is the actual animatable point. All right, so we've de developed those three things. Now watch what happens. I'm going to go back to animate for a second here. Let's go into animate. I'll scrub backwards a little bit. Watch what happens now when I try and move this root around. If I try and move the root, oh, I've got this thing set up already still. Let me just turn this off. That's awesome. Ignore what I'm doing for a second, guys. We'll get to that. Don't worry. Turn my, oh, I can't do it here. I have to go to setup. Sorry, guys. Ignore what I'm doing. Ignore it. Uh, my ball. Boom. Same thing with this side. Sorry, guys. We're going to get to that. I was ahead of myself because I crashed. All right. Because <laughs> I crashed and lost everything, I had to redo it. Anyway, guys, uh, let's take a look over here. Uh, if I move this guy up and down now in my setup mode, if I go back to my root right here and I move it up and down, watch what's going to happen. My ankle does its absolute best to stay in place. My knee automatically bends to try and keep my, my, my ankle where it's supposed to be. All right. On the right-hand side, that's what's happening. On the left-hand side, you can see that, that that foot is still going through the floor, and I have to counter-animate that. Now, I don't want to do that. So, And I also don't want my ankle to rotate. That's kind of an issue. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to scrub back in here, and I'm going to grab my, my ankle bone. And when I grab my ankle bone, once again, I'm going to go to Constraints, and I'm going to add a brand new IK constraint right at the ball of the foot, right there. And I'm going to rename this to IK underscore ball underscore right. And I'm going to hit return. All right. And bang, there we go. I've got it again. There's my ball IK. If I scrub up here and take a look, there's my, my ankle IK has the actual ball IK on it. If I hover over it, there it is. And at the top, I've got myself the a ball IK as well. So I can animate this object. Now in animate mode, this is hollow. So let's go and check and see what happens in animate now. In animate, when I move my my root up and down, my foot does its best to stay in position. So that's really great. That's what I want. It's staying flat. Regardless of where I move this character, my foot is staying flat. That is awesome. Let me just save this because I don't want to lose it again. Save project. Now, let's take a look at something here. This is one of our problems. I'm going to go back to animate for a second, and I should be able to rotate my ankle joint, my ball joint, excuse me, my ball joint. I want to be able to rotate this, and when I rotate it, I want everything above it to follow. But watch what happens. When I say rotate right now, watch what happens. Absolutely nothing. And that kind of sucks. That's the first problem we've got. Let's also take a look at what happens when I drag, when I grab this guy and I drag it forward. Watch what happens to my toe if I drag this forward. All right. I'm rotating around the toes and I don't want that. I want my ball to roll up on itself so I can kind of keep my toes flat on the ground as my ball rolls up on, on, the, on as I roll up on the ball of my foot. So let's fix both of those problems right now. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the ball joint down here. If we click on it, we're going to see that we have inheritance, and it says inherent rotation and scale. Now, this is what I corrected before. What you want to do is you want to turn off your rotation. That's our first thing we want to do, okay? The next thing I want to do is I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to find my ankle IK, and I'm going to drag it and drop it onto my ball IK, so I end up with my, my parent being the ball IK, and my ankle IK being the child. Now, let's see what happens when I go to animate at this point. I'm going to select my ball IK, and I'm going to go to rotation, and now by rotating this, I can actually rotate my character's foot around the ball. All right, so my foot is actually staying flat. The same thing is true if I grabbed onto this guy and I translated it. It's going to do its best to remain flat. So if I drag it down and I drag it over, for example, it's going to drag the, the heel up and the ball of the foot is going to stay on the ground, allowing my character to push off. That is pretty darn awesome. Let's go back to setup. Oh, one last thing. If I grab the ball IK right now in translate mode and I move it up and down, it moves the entire foot. So you can see how I'm moving the entire foot just by moving the ball IK around. All right. Perfect. That's exactly what I want to do. I want you guys to do exactly the same thing on the left-hand side, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, guys, there we go. Both my IK feet are set up. Everything is working great now. If I head over into Animate and I check it out, let's grab this root around and see what happens. Regardless now of where I drag my root, my feet are doing their best to stay on the ground. So my guy can boogie just like that. All right, you can see I'm getting the automatic knee bends. The feet are staying flat regardless of where I put this where I shift this character's weight. So if he's kind of like shifting back and forth, our feet stay nice and flat. 
Anyway, guys, that's the idea of IK constraints. You could use it for many different things. Like I said, if you had a walking staff and you wanted your character to plant a walking staff and move forward, if your character's riding a horse and you want to follow the reins, if you wanted your character to have a box they're carrying and you want to animate the box instead of the hand and the hand automatically move, you could do everything like that with a simple IK constraint. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that, pro that that particular episode. That takes us to the end of it. I really hope you guys have got yourself a character. I really hope that you are following along with these ideas. I know that my, my first-year students at Sheridan are right now utilizing the same idea to build themselves characters that they're going to put into a game. And like I always do, at the end of this series, you're going to see all of the games that my students made. All right, This course is about animation, so it's going to focus more on the animation rather than the actual gameplay, but you guys are going to see all of the games at the end. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really look forward to seeing what you are making with these particular tutorials. All right, guys, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.